Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrew Olson, and this is a classic cinema review. Clarence E. Mulford's Hopalong Cassidy, directed by Howard Bretherton, produced by Harry Sherman Productions, and released by Paramount Pictures in 1935. The film stars William Boyd as the title character Hopalong Cassidy, with Jimmy Ellison as Johnny Nelson, Paula Stone as Mary Meeker, George Hayes as Uncle Ben. We've also got Kenneth Thompson as Jack Anthony, Frank McGlynn Jr. as Red Connors, Charles Middleton as Buck Peters, and Robert Warwick as Jim Meeker to round out the principal cast. The film opens with Johnny Nelson, Red Connors, and Uncle Ben getting ready for a day on the Bar 20 range. They end up ragging each other, as usual, uh, about each other's eccentricities and other trivial matters. And it's all fun and games until one of them mentions the name of Bill Cassidy. Johnny, being the proud, self-assured, and uh, overconfident individual that he is, is upset about uh, being overshadowed by just a name. Uh, Bill Cassidy and his exploits are all he's been hearing ever since he joined the Bar 20 Ranch. And uh, he's tired of hearing about these uh, exploits and uh, having never met the man. Buck Peters rides up and interrupts the little argument over Bill Cassidy and informs his men that cows from the Meeker Ranch, the, uh, the neighboring ranch, have wandered over and are now grazing on Bar 20 land. Johnny, with his spirits lifted once again, ends up riding off to take care of the matter. He does run into beautiful Mary Meeker, uh, Jim Meeker's daughter. Jim Meeker is the owner of the Meeker Ranch. And uh, Johnny ends up having an argument with Mary over water rights, grazing space, and the like. He tries to set her straight in regards to the lines of the properties and all of that, but only makes things worse. Uh, on top of that, Jack Anthony, who is the uh, foreman for the Meeker Ranch, it ends up riding by, misinterprets Johnny's intentions towards Mary, and ends up shooting Johnny's horse out from underneath him. Uh, this fight, now full-blown, Johnny almost ends up being tramped by the uh, foreman's horse, but is saved by a, a timely entrance from a, a mysterious individual dressed in black and riding a white horse. This individual turns out to be none other than Bill Cassidy himself, who is expected back at the ranch. Cassidy, being the uh, well-spoken and level-headed individual that he is, sorts things out, but everybody goes their own way holding uh, a bit of a grudge. Back at the ranch, Cassidy is informed by Uncle Ben that trouble's brewing, and Cassidy says that he can smell it. Unfortunately, back at the Meeker Ranch, Anthony and Miss Mary uh, inform Jim Meeker that uh, Cassidy and Johnny Nelson were trying to stir up trouble, which is not quite true. Pot shots end up escalating into a full-blown range war. Uh, Cassidy always trying to see things as they are and trying to keep a, a level, cool head about him, tries to work out the differences between the two. Uh, Cowpunchers from both sides end up being shot at, some of them end up being killed. Uh, intentions from both the Bar 20 and the Meeker side end up being misconstrued for what they really are, and uh, ultimately cattle start disappearing in big numbers, they end up being rustled. Uh, not only that, but a mysterious uh, brand mark on uh, various cattle end up turning up. Uh, this mysterious brand it doesn't belong to either side, although Cassidy begins to reason that he's got things figured out once that piece of evidence turns up. Things kind of escalate even further, including Johnny Nelson nearly being hung for turning up at Miss Mary's birthday party over on the Meeker Ranch, 
And of course, there's the incident where Hopalong Cassidy earns his nickname of Hopalong. He is known as Bill Cassidy up until that point, whereas afterwards, he is forever known as Hopalong. Uh, I, won't, I won't give away too much. If you want to actually find out what happens, please, by all means, see the film. This is the first film in what would eventually be the longest-running B-movie Western series of all time. Between 1935 and 1949, 66 Hopalong Cassidy films were produced. William Boyd played Cassidy in all of them. Uh, he also followed up the film series with a television series in between 19... 1949, 1950, somewhere around there, and 1954, I think. I believe so. Uh, the television series had very little to do with the film series, but Cassidy was the mainstay character throughout. Uh, this being a B-Western movie, or, yeah, B-Western picture, it wasn't of an extremely high budget, and certainly the acting in the film leaves a little bit to be desired. However, William Boyd as Cassidy and George, George Hayes as Uncle Ben are two of the standouts in the film. Uh, and the Cassidy films, despite the fact that they were B-movie westerns and of low budget were still a cut above many of the other B-movie westerns coming out at that particular time. The acting by a lot of the actors is not A-list, it's not top-notch, but the only character I really have a problem with uh, in terms of portrayal is Johnny Nelson, played by Jimmy Ellison. I think Ellison could have... I, I, he was overdoing it just a little bit, and that bothers me. I, I think some people might be put off by the portrayal of the character as being uh, overdone. But there is a contrast between him, excuse me, and uh, Hopalong Cassidy, and that's probably what they were going for at the time. This is also a film that's interesting because you see the flaws in the characters. Cassidy, although he he has a very high standard, I guess, he has that unparalleled code of ethics that I've mentioned already, but he's not a perfect character, and there are a few scenes where you see that. Johnny almost provokes him into drawing and uh, shooting him, and I thought that was very interesting. It is implied earlier in the film that Johnny is a lot like Cassidy used to be when he was that age. And you do get to see that a little bit uh, throughout the film. There are a couple of instances. Um, and it's always interesting to see characters that, although not extremely well developed, are three-dimensional in a, a film of this uh, budget and caliber. Uh, the cinematography for a lot of the outdoor shots, and remember, filming outdoors certainly back in the early days of film was difficult. Uh, it's always difficult filming outside. You've got the weather to contend with, you've got the problem of light and shadow and the sun moving and all of that. If you look at the shots, a lot of them are framed very well. And the backdrop for many of the shots out on the range is the, the snow-capped peaks of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Uh, they, the films were filmed in and around Lone Pine, California. Now, I've never been to Lone, Lone Pine myself, but hopefully one day I'll make it out there because it's beautiful country. The characters are defined fairly well, although there's not a lot of character development. They are still defined and are unique in and of themselves and contrast each other rather well. Uh, the character of Hopalong Cassidy is, of course, the creation of Clarence E. Mulford, and Cassidy has been around since 19... 1905, I think? 05, 06? There's conflicting information that I found about when exactly Hopalong Cassidy uh, was created, but he's been around for a very, very long time. I know a lot of people contribute, uh, or, excuse me, attribute Cassidy to... Uh, Louis L'Amour. But Louis L'Amour wrote his Cassidy stories 
starting in 1950, and this film came out in 35, and of course is based on the earlier works of Mulford. I won't go into the different versions of Cassidy too much. Mulford created him as being a rough, tough, uh, hard-drinking, and foul-mouthed character uh, who smoked and uh, got into scraps uh, fairly quickly, much like a lot of the other rough, tough characters of the Western genre. But he was cleaned up for the movies. And the fact that he got cleaned up, he, he was never... You never saw him drunk. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He always had a clear head. And that was what made him such a hard character to beat. You know, he was clear-headed, and he always had a sharp eye for details in the movies. Not that he didn't in the books, but uh, Cassidy in the films had an unparalleled code of ethics. And that's what made him such an iconic character. He was a role model that many, many people wanted to look up to. And he was a role model for kids. It wasn't He didn't start out as a role model for children, but the television series in the 50s kind of started out as being almost a, a, a program for children. But watching the films as a kid myself, you could look up to Cassidy, and certainly that, that role model as a kid certainly helped uh, me as I was growing up, for sure. Uh, I liked exploring this film going back to it because I, I saw the film probably when I was, I don't know, nine, eight, nine, ten, somewhere around there at first and enjoyed the film for a few years and then kind of uh, turned to other things. But exploring the Hopalong Cassidy films has been uh, a joy. Uh, stepping back to the, the it's kind of like going back to when I was a kid. It's it's fun exploring these films. And you don't have to be a kid to watch them. And certainly a lot of kids, I'm sure, went to see him in theaters in the 30s and 40s. But uh, he's a character, and the characters that surround him can be enjoyed by all ages. There isn't a lot of music in the film. Uh, B-movie pictures of any genre, you know, the, the score costs quite a bit of money. you got to pay the musicians, you got to pay somebody to write the score, you got to pay somebody to, to put all that together. Uh, there's some canned music used for some of the action sequences toward the end of the film. And there, there is the theme song of the movie, which I don't know the name of. I don't even know if it's mentioned in the, uh, the opening credits. But the music and lyrics were done by... Just a minute. Sam H. Stept. Either Step or Stept. S-T-E-P-T. -E uh, if you know the correct pronunciation, please leave it down below. Uh, let me know in the comments. And David Franklin, they did the music and lyrics for the film. The music doesn't need a lot of, of music, really. Uh, it might have benefited from it in a few spots, but it's... I don't know, I guess I've, I've seen this movie a number of times throughout the years, and I've just kind of taken it for granted that there is none. So, uh, I don't see much of a problem with that. Uh, I can't really fault... Uh, the film for a lot of things. It was low budget, as I've said several times already, and in those days, these films were products of their time. People were looking for cheap entertainment, and they were looking for escapism. You know, that's what uh, Pulp Fiction magazines were all about. Cheap entertainment and escapism. And you get adventure, you get, you know, beautiful landscapes and uh, interesting characters that take you away from your everyday life. And certainly in this day and age, what with the, uh, the plague, if you will, running around and uh, the economy has been greatly affected, although I will say the economy was set to have this problem whether the virus hit us or not. It was only a matter of time. Uh, all of these big problems are leading a lot of people to look for an escape. And if you're looking for that, you really only have to turn back to 80 years ago when the Great Depression was going on and a lot of material was all about escapism 
And if you're looking for entertainment that is cheap, but will bring you to some other area, look no further than Hopalong Cassidy. I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, not perfect, certainly, but definitely uh, entertaining nonetheless. I'll give it a three and a half star rating out of five stars. I think a lot of the films I've I've uh, reviewed so far have a three and a half star out of five star rating, but uh, I think the film could almost touch on a four star rating, uh, believe it or not. Maybe it's just the nostalgia from when I was a kid, but uh, I do enjoy these films, all of them. I haven't seen all of them. One day I'll get to all of them, but this is a good place to start. I can't leave you folks without saying thank you to Jerry over at Dr. Macro.com. Jerry's probably wondering, Andrew, where the heck is that Hopalong Cassidy review? I gave you the pictures and the posters months ago. Well, I'm actually still working through all of this uh, uh, rigmarole of uh, social distancing and so on and so forth, so I haven't had a ton of time to do these, but uh, I do have several more in the works. Not Cassidy films, but um, uh, several other films of different genres, and I think we're going to do some comedy and we're going to do some uh, some crime uh, fiction as well. So I've got a few more in the works coming up. Uh, but thank you, Jerry, for all of your help in my videos thus far, and I hope we continue this. Um, thank you for the images, and if you folks want to see images, uh, whether it's photographs of actors and actresses from a bygone era, or posters and other memorabilia from these films they starred in, head over to drmacro.com. I'll leave a link in the description below, and um, uh, let Jerry know that uh, you were sent over there, or you went to his site because you uh, you saw the uh, link on my video, or the images in my video. So thank you once again, Jerry. I want to thank all of you for watching. Please uh, support the channel by liking the video. Please subscribe for more videos to come, more reviews, and uh, other various and sundry videos that I've got uh, lined up for the next uh, few months. Thank you for watching once again. I appreciate it very much. I look forward to seeing all of you next time.